Good morning, everybody. I say this is Alistair Fraser from, from Oracle. Uh, thanks for taking the time out to uh, listen to us this morning, and hope we see you the slides. Um, I'm going to be assisted today by one of the technical specialists in this area from Oracle, James Anthony. And the presentation is getting done in association with one of our partners, InnoApps. These are the guys that have been sending the emails, and they'll be doing the, the follow-up after the web conference with sending out the links to the slides and, and things like that. This is asking it all to be recorded, so if you would uh, like other, your colleagues to actually see this, it will be available on the InnoApps website. Um, we're just going to run through, say, for about 45 minutes today, um, talking about PCI, the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standards. Um, as it's a webcast, interesting format, obviously, to try and present with. If you have any questions that come up during the, uh, the presentations, you'll see in the control panel for the webcast a little question box. If you can post them and type them in there, and we'll address those at the, the end of the session. Okay, so uh, very common message, this credit card fraud is rampant. Uh, it doesn't matter, you can pick up the papers almost any day and find this message. Um, one of the most famous ones, of course, is TJX, or who trade in the UK as TK Maxx, um, and as I say, it's reported that as many as 40 million credit cards have, had been compromised. The reality is that 96 million credit cards numbers were, and details were seized through the, the TJX um, intrusion. And there are numerous others there. The ones you'll hear about are probably mostly American. Why is that? Because in the US it is um, compulsory, mandatory that you actually uh, announce where you have had a security breach. That doesn't happen in Europe and the UK. And unsurprisingly, of course, most organizations don't want to admit that it happens because it's not good for the brand. However, you look at those figures at the bottom of the screen there from APAX, the fraud figures are quite astounding. Uh, and that's covering, obviously, the UK. Um, and this last line here as well, uh, credit card fraud at supermarkets increases financial crisis bites. With the current credit crunch, whatever we want to call this, that's what all the analysts are telling us, that this type of uh, crime will be on the increase. Um, so to address this, uh, obviously the people that are, are um, suffering from this mostly are the card issuers because they're the guys that are primarily liable for any fraudulent transactions. And this was starting to, to hurt somewhat. So the, these big guys that generally compete very um, heavily against each other decided to come together back in 2006 and came up with this concept through their industry body, body the PCI, payment card industry, with these data security standards. So what is PCI DSS, the Data Security Standard? It's an industry compliance and validation mechanism, and it applies to anybody in the supply chain, shall we say, using credit cards. That is the card suppliers themselves, the financial institutions, the merchant acquirers that actually you uh, are probably dealing with directly yourselves, and then yourselves as the, the merchants and the vendors who are actually taking credit card payments. Now, the rules are quite, are actually very prescriptive. They, are, they state what you uh, must do if you wish to continue trading using credit cards. Uh, this is not optional. Uh, it is mandatory. A um, number of areas that this covers, six main areas. Uh, building and maintaining a secure network. Protecting the data. Maintaining a vulnerability management program, implementing strong access control measures, regularly monitoring and testing networks, and maintaining an information security policy. Now, a lot of that is actually about process rather than technology. So there's, there's no um, silver bullet here. There's not one place you can actually go to to find a solution to all this. It is something that you and your organizations are going to have to uh, deal with yourselves in a process manner. But there are things that technology vendors such as ourselves can actually assist you with. How this impacts you depends on um, how well you are, um, or how large a, a merchant you actually are. They have, PCI have come up with this concept of different 
levels of merchant. Level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4. And it's to do with the number of transactions you take within the year. What's the significance of these levels? Well, depending on where you sit on this uh, will depend on how stringent the checks of your compliance are. Doesn't change what you have to do, just how, it, how uh, stringent the checks are. And also how swinging the penalties are for non-compliance. Uh, at the top end, um, you're looking at significant fines in the hundreds of thousands of pounds for, for initial non-compliance, as well as potentially increased tra uh, transaction charges on everything you do. This can have a very significant impact, obviously, on the, uh, the margin at which you do business with credit cards. I'm going to ask a, a quick poll here. Um, Hopefully you can see this. Um, can you actually tell us which of these categories you fall into, if you know? If you just click on one of those boxes and press the Submit button. Most people voted. Let's see what the results say. So most of you guys are in that level two category. That's interesting, um, which is quite significant um, in terms of the, the risks and threats to you. Level four. Um, where everybody else is sitting, yep, uh, you're probably at less risk, but you still need to address what the PCI data standard, security standard actually says. So where are we with PCI DSS? It was I say, released some years ago when they first came together, version 1.0, back in 2004, and it was supposed to be effective from July 2005. And it set out the 12 major focus areas for um, the, that you need to address. And we'll look at those in more detail later on in the presentation. Um, not many people, apart from the big guys, probably the, the merchant acquirers, uh, were really doing this. Um, but PCI DSS, as we can see, is not a static standard. It is something that the PCI guys are looking to make sure that they keep up to date with new threats as they are recognized um, or holes in the standard. It does mean that um, you have got an ongoing investment in uh, what needs to be done. So beyond 1.0, they came out with 1.1 1 .1 in 2006 with compliance deadlines for, again, varying on the um, where you are as a merchant, this level one, level two, when you had to be compliant. It was a bit more explicit in what they had to do. Somebody's asking, is PCI compliance mandatory? If you are taking, and I'll repeat that, if you are taking credit card transactions, then you must be compliant with this. Okay. So 1.1, and that is the one that, if anybody has done any work uh, to uh, achieve this, Oh, sorry, can I put a question on the Who's going to enforce the compliance fee? Who is going to enforce it? Um, it's a very good question. Um, it will be done through the, the PCI guys don't do it directly. They actually pass the responsibility on to the merchant acquirers. And the merchant acquirers are supposed to actually uh, get you to self-certify in a lot of ways that you are compliant. If you're a level one, level two, they will do that. Um, probably in person. It's going to be slightly different for each of these, mar these uh, the merchant acquirer type organizations. As you go down to the level threes, level fours, that becomes self-certification and you say, yeah, I am compliant. Um, if you, you then subsequently have a, a loss and are found to be non-compliant, you will be heavily fined. Um, 